Lesson 7, Part 3. In this lesson, I'm going to talk about how to put these things together. Put the uh, pick box in with the three-column layout. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the different types of selectors that we've used, a little bit more detail into that. So first thing we need to do is open up both the three-column layout and the pick box that we have built. So I've got the pick box open. I'm going to go and open the three-column layout. Three column layout, basic three column liquid, open it. Now I've got them both open. So this is the CSS that I that I created for my three column layout. This is the markup that I created for the three column layout. And here's my pick box. Now I want to put the pick box into the three column layout. Okay? So it's going to require me to move both the markup and the CSS. So I want to pick a place in my three column layout where I want the pick box to appear. I want it to appear in between the first and second paragraph right here. Okay. So that's where it's going to go. Come over here, copy the markup, control C, come back over here and paste it in. All right. So now my pick box is right here in between this paragraph and this paragraph. If I save it, and run it in Firefox, it's not going to look right. In fact, it doesn't appear at all. And why is that? Well, if you haven't guessed, I did not move the image over to the new folder. So I've got to, mo got to go to my, my documents. And as we talked about before, if you don't move the image along with the markup, things won't work. So, pick box has the image. I'm just going to copy both of these. I'm going to bring them both over to three column layout. Paste. And then see if it works. And there, my picture appeared. So I've got my caption there. I've got my picture, and it's in between this paragraph and this paragraph. But the box didn't appear. Okay, My pick box didn't appear, and the picture is full size instead of shrunk down. So I need to go over and bring the CSS over also. Okay, So I'll go up to my style sheet, select my CSS, copy it, Go up into the style sheet on this one and paste. Now I've got my CSS for pick box, pick box image, and image caption. If I save it, come over here and refresh it. There, I've got my pick box. Now it's not doing exactly what I want it to do. I want to make it float. I want to have the text flow around my pick box. Okay. In order to do that, I need to use the float property. I'm going to do it on pick box because what I want to float is the container that's holding the picture, so that anything that's contained in there will move over along with that pick box. So, float. I can have it float left or right. In this case, I think I'll have it float to the right. When I float to the right, it's going to move the picture over to the right and have text wrap around it on the left side. Pretty nifty stuff, I think. Now, if I wanted to do a little bit of final touch-up on this, I would not want to have text so close to the left side of my pick box. Okay, So maybe if this is a float right pick box, I want to give it a little bit of a left margin. So pick box it doesn't have any margins yet. So I'm going to go margin left and go 10 pixels. Save it. Refresh it. And now it's got a little bit of breathing room there. Okay, it's got some what we call white space here. Give it some room to breathe. Okay?
So now there are lots of ways that we can style this thing. I'm going to show you some other options. Instead of just giving it a background color, one thing that I think looks kind of classy sometimes is just giving it a border top and a border bottom. So I'm going to give a solid black border on the top of 5 pixels. And on the bottom, I'm going to make it slightly heavier. I'm going to go 8 pixels on the bottom. See, nah, that's too big. 3 and 5. Save it. Come over here and refresh it. And that looks kind of nice for a caption box. So. If I were to go um, further with this design, there are lots of things I could do. Um, definitely I would change the background colors, probably take background colors out entirely. I'd probably put something up in the header that more than just the word header. I'd probably put navigation in column one. And in column three, I would use that for uh, any kind of auxiliary information. Maybe I would use it for advertisements, for um, excerpts from from important articles things like that okay now so I've got this thing together I've got my pick box in here with my three column layout it's floated right I've got text floating around it it's looking pretty nice okay now I want to talk a little bit about some of this markup I've done some things in here but I haven't really explained them very well we've talked about selectors we've been using ID selectors for another for for a lesson or so okay I talked a little bit about class selectors. They're very similar to the ID, except class selectors I can use over and over and over and over and over again. For example, I can copy this pick box and I can put another one right in here, save it, and it'll work without any problem. I'll have another pick box down there. It's going to act funny because when you have a float next to a float, they kind of fight. Um, but I can use the classes over and over and over again. Now, one thing that I did not explain is this. This does something where we use two selectors to select one thing. This is called descendant selection. What it does is it says, I want the pick box, I want, I want the image selected, but I don't want to select all images. I only want the image that's inside of pick box. Okay? So what we can do is we can look at things that are, that are descendants. In other words, a descendant would be anything that's nested inside of another thing. So all of these things, everything, all of my markup, are descendants of body. Okay? Because they're all inside of body. So they're the child of body. They sit in there, they're a descendant. Body and everything else is the child of HTML. And all of these things are grandchildren of HTML because they are inside of body. They're two generations removed from HTML. So, descendant selection allows us to be very specific in what we want to select. In this case, I only want to select the image that's inside of Pickbox. If I took this away, any image that's in there that I throw into my document would be 175 pixels wide. But what if I want to have an image in the header? that I want to have to be 775 pixels wide. We would have a fight. That's why we use this descendant selector. It allows us to more specifically select things within the document. 